All right, so welcome and thank you for joining us for a quick rundown of how to complete the A Better Chance application. Uh, before we get started, there are a few very important actions to consider to assure applying is easy. Number one, when creating an account, make sure you use your primary email address. Because most communication from A Better Chance will be via email, using a reliable email address assures that you don't miss any important reminders. Uh, number two is save your login credentials once they're created. They will be needed whenever you want to log back in and manage pieces of the application. Finally, number three, if you have completed the inquiry form on the Better Chance webpage, please note that it's not a substitute for the application. Our inquiry form is used to contact families about upcoming info sessions and to send reminders about the application. The application can actually be found by following the link in the Apply Now section of our website under Application Information. So this is the application login page. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark the page so I can easily access it when needed. A highly suggested move is to save the application instructions file so you can reference it whenever you'd like. Uh, this document gives us an outline of how to move along the application. It also has troubleshooting steps and provides answers to frequently asked questions. So I saved that as a PDF. Um, so to begin, I'm gonna select create an account and input my primary email address. Parents, this should be the email address you check most frequently and have easiest access to. It's also the address you should be entering in the parent email fields. Then once I have received my instructions, I'll follow the link I've received via email. A helpful tip in order to assure you never miss a message is, you know, it's recommended you save any A Better Chance emails in your address book. This should be both the admissions at abetterchance.org email address and that of your regional team if you've already received a message from them. So go ahead and do that. Save it in your address book or your contacts. It's going to be a lifesaver later on. All right, once I've received and read the automated email, I'll create a password and get going with the login process. Now that I've created an account, I'm ready to log in and get started. The first thing you'll see once you've logged into your account is the add applicant option on your left. I'm going to select that option and add the student's information. If you've got siblings applying to the program, this menu allows you to set up profiles for each of them. Note that when entering the student's apply grade, we're inputting a grade two years ahead of the grade that they're currently in. So for example, this student is in seventh grade, so we are indicating that they're applying to the ninth grade, which is the entry grade for high school. Um, so for now, this would be essentially two academic grades above the current applicant grade. All right, it looks like we're ready to go with the account action items. You know, this account page is conveniently prepared to guide you through the initial application. If you are selected for the cohort in your region, you will have a similar page for the updated supplements in the fall. For now, your action items should guide the way. On your right, you can see that these items have checkboxes. Uh, these will have green check marks once they've completed and processed any of these uh, individual action items. So for recommendations, the status will update depending on where your recommenders are in, the, in completing their forms. Um, but you can only really see the check marks once the application component is done. So once each item is completed, your application will be ready to be reviewed. An email will be sent to you to schedule your benchmark test, which is essentially an SSAT exam a better chance uses as part of your application process. And you know it's good to note that you won't receive a benchmark registration info uh, if you have not yet completed or submitted the application part. So for a better chance to have your information and to be able to support you as you complete the initial supplements, it's a good idea generally to complete the application component early. It's essentially a parent and student questionnaire. And you know, you're also more than welcome to send the recommendation requests early on so that you can get a head, uh, head start on them. This is often a good move as teachers and administrators need a window of time to set aside to complete their recommendation. And it's, um, and, and it's right, right here. And you know, one of the things that we often offer as a tip is that when you send a request, it may be helpful to gently note to your recommenders that the recommendation forms are not open-ended and can take anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes to complete tops uh, because they may be getting multiple requests from various sources. This gentle nudge can remind them that they may not need a whole lot of time to carve out to complete these things. Uh, the, another tip is to make sure that you check in with your recommenders before and after. Before, to make sure that they 
um, are giving you the right email address and that it's accurate and, and all of that good stuff. And then after to make sure that they've received it. This helps them keep track of it and, and it allows it to be submitted in a relatively timely fashion. So uh, we're gonna go through and start, uh, start completing the application. So uh, I can select complete form and, and uh, get started with everything. Uh, one of the things you'll notice up here is that instructions are here also. Uh, you may have recalled that we saved the the form earlier. It's it's here anyway just to be safe, um, just if it's something that you'd like. Um, if you do have uh, Spanish-speaking parents or if you prefer Spanish, there are uh, there is a guideline that you can download that's in Spanish as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select Complete Form. Um, and right there, it already has my preliminary information. It has the fictional first and last name that I inputted just for this demo, uh, date of birth, and, and all this all this stuff right here. This this again should be should be clear to you. If you do have questions about this, if you're not sure about what your apply grade is or anything like that, you can always reach out to us. Um, here you have the applicant email address and the applicant cell phone, Skype address if you'd like to include that. Um, here you have just citizenship and permanent resident questions. Um, if you have questions about these as well, you can always give a better chance a call. Your regional office is more than happy to help. And and then you can just get started. So here is where I'm going to input information about um, the, the student I am applying for. So um, here is it's really just a biographical kind of um, a data access point for us. And once you once you punch in all this information, you're ready to go to the next step. So you can go to the next page and then we start having questions about your household. And this is this is super helpful because it, it allows us to know how the how the student's family is distributed. So if you have a, um, a split household, um, you can you can input that information separately. This is just household one. You can input that in household two. There's parent parent one and parent two in the in the uh, first household if there is a parent that is involved uh, and and lives with the the student then you can input that in the household in household one but if if it is a parent where it is a split household then make sure you put that other parent in household two that will make uh, a lot a lot of our messages a lot clearer and and, and easier once we start um, gathering data All right, so then uh, I'll input all the employment information for for myself. Um, in this hypothetical situation, I am the primary parent, and I am um, I'm going to input this information here. This will help in in uh, you know gathering more data as it relates to how to support the student. It it also it's also a great reference point for a better chance to use when um, when we are helping situations with with families as they start having more questions about financial aid and things like that which which we'll, we'll get into we'll get into in a second so this is again household two um, this this instruction page is is helpful so here it says do not enter information from household one in this section so again you, you have to be distinct if there is a split household and um, and a student is is or is not receiving any sort of support from from the other parent. So again, this is one of those instances where, for whatever reason, you have a question or you're, you're not really sure about, you can always you can always give us a call or shoot us an email. So again, it's the same kind of information but a different household, and and we we can keep we can keep moving. So if this is your the first child to apply to a better chance, you can indicate it here. Um, so again, all, all of this is pretty pretty basic. It's pretty straightforward. Um, information if you if you do have any current or former friends or acquaintances or family members uh, that are scholars or alum you can input that here um, and then again you start filling out very basic demographic information and um, it's great in these instances and especially during the questionnaires to be as honest as possible this will assure that when we are advocating for students in the in the fall should we accept the applicant into the cohort um, we have everything covered we have all bases covered and we and we understand the students case and their background very thoroughly this is this is very very helpful and I and I'll, I'll pause right now just to make a quick note uh, let's say hypothetically I was filling this out and let's say I was in the office 
and I needed to stop. I wanted to save my progress. This right here would, would be where you would click. You would save this, and what's great is that you would be able to log back in using that, that, that main login page and input your, your uh, primary email address, the, the address that you use to create the account, input your password, and, and then it'll, it'll have you land right back where you, where you left off. So that's, that's really cool. Um, so here's a parent questionnaire. So this is one in which it's super important to read the instructions because sometimes folks will, will write um, beyond the word limit. And as it is here, it says it will get cut off. So these questions are, are very straightforward and, um, and really rely on the parent's analysis of, of their child and their potential and, and, and how they are and, and so on and so forth. Here again, it's, it's great to be honest, straightforward and, um, and input everything to as much detail as you'd like. Um, these are questions about uh, learning style differences. If, if they exist, what are they? They help us in, in, in assuring that the student is, um, is taken care of. If they are accepted into the cohort, then, then we, can, we can identify schools that have those kinds of support systems built in. Um, and, and again, so once you're done with this, the parent would, can then click on uh, this financial information form. Uh, this, is, this is preliminary information for us. It's very helpful that you have as much detail here. Uh, this is used for the organization to assess uh, the types of uh, needs that the parents will have, the, the, that the family will have. It is preliminary because we do have a our official financial aid forms that we have our families complete, just as anyone would when they're that when they are applying to independent schools in the fall. But this is this is used early on to create a a profile, and it helps us. Uh, an example of one of the ways that it helps us is that sometimes families will um, will require fee waivers, and this kind of information can help us to assure that we are assigning fee waivers to those that 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 need it. So again, you'll fill, fill this stuff out, take your time with it. Again, you can save it and go back in and, and you move along the, the application. Uh, this, is, this declaration is just a, a, a great way for us to assure that, that families know what the, the information is used for, that you acknowledge the, the, um, the application being submitted to a better chance. Uh, take your time reading it if you'd like, then you sign off here, date it, and you are good to go. This is an instance in which your 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 student, your applicant, will probably want to step in, where they can input information about their activities, the type, the types, and the number of years involved, what they want to do in high school or middle school, depending on the child, and um, and and this helps us to see what kinds of things that the students are are interested in. So again, you you want to be honest, you want to be clear, and and put in all the activities that the students are involved in, and then. You move forward, and this is an instance again. This is where we we we've we've now switched. I, I want to make that clear that this is the applicant section. It's it it had started with that activities component. This is where the applicant should step in. It's very clear to us when we see a file or read a file where the parent has inputted this information. We want to make sure it's the applicant section, and the students are completing it to the best of their ability. Um, and once once a student completes this. They can they can move along, uh, again being de as detailed as possible. Here, these are pretty simple, very easy questions that you can answer. Uh, remember that the the asterisk means that it's a required item. Uh, make sure that that is that is inputted, and and you move move along. Uh, this is this is the essay question portion. Uh, here, I, I want to emphasize too that the original essay. Uh, that the student submits should be between 300 and 500 words and should not exceed that limit because again there is that cutoff issue. Um, I, I do I do hope that as students apply as the as we start reviewing the applicants this becomes clear that as they apply they are reviewing what they're writing. Sometimes you know a better chance we'll get an application that is one stri stream of consciousness that is doesn't really have too much grammatical uh, structure and, and you know spotty punctuation make sure that the student rereads it and assures that they have a, a, a pretty decent flow of thoughts that that is that is helpful for us so again you choose a topic and you you write about it in your in your essay question and that just about wraps it up so then right here you can submit it and and get it going I do suggest that you select this option to 
uh, view the application and print it. So what will happen is that you'll see a window pop up with what you've submitted. Um, it's super helpful to, to save this or print it just, just to have as a reference. Um, so again, once you select submit, it'll be ready to go and you'll, you'll see that checked off. Uh, right now what I'll do is I'm gonna go back um, just to show you the other components. So here, when you submitted the application, you need to submit the supporting documents. Uh, very easy, pretty straightforward. So you select that. Here are very thorough instructions about the photo upload. Um, just know that the, the, the skinny here is just that you upload a photo that has a pretty, pretty easy to see um, student face. Um, a portrait style is ideal. Um, we, we get students who submit a headshot and some students who submit a scanned photo of a uh, school ID. Uh, we, we want somewhere in the middle, essentially. You, we don't need you to go out and get professional headshots, but just something that, that has a, a uh, easy to see photo um, of, the, of the student. Uh, here is where you would submit, if you, if you are a permanent resident, if the student is a permanent resident, this is where they would input their information. This is one of those instances as well. If you have questions about this at all, feel free to reach out to your regional team, your, your local programs team. They'd be more than happy to address any of the questions you have. Um, here is proof of income. This again is, is for us to have a, a better financial assessment. Again, this is all kept confidential. Um, here are instructions. It's essentially to the, the front two pages of your, your federal tax return. Um, parent one can submit it here. And if there is a parent two, you can submit that here as well. Um, the transcripts will, will uh, need to be uploaded. There are previous transcripts and current transcripts. Um, the instructions are here. And the key here is to assure that it is a PDF document. We get, we get families who submit camera images and, and, and photos and they, they just don't transfer correctly. Make sure that these are PDFs. Um, and um, if you have questions about how to create a conversion and how to produce a file, there's a, a link here for your convenience. Um, the, the last thing here is that if a student does have standardized testing, you can upload it here. And again, this should be a PDF. Um, this is all very quick, very painless and um, it can assure that we have all the supporting documents for the application. Um, one thing with the transcripts is that there is a transcript request form which you can take to your school to, to retrieve the transcripts. Um, school administrators typically like to see this just to assure that they, that they know where the transcripts are going. Um, some districts may require a few more steps than just going into your office and pulling those. Um, once those are ready to go and submitted, you can just put submit here um, just to assure that it is all sent in and we're able to process that. Um, going back in, uh, for the recommendations, the instructions are here. We It's pretty simple. All we need is a principal counselor recommendation and a core academic teacher. Um, when, when you send a request, you select that button. It gives you instructions here. You want to make sure here that the recommender's email is accurate. It is spelled correctly. And it is, it is the one that will go directly to the recommender. It can't go to someone else to forward it along. It won't work. Um, once you've inputted that, you can input a message, anything that, that um, lets the, you know, the recommender know that, that you are requesting it, and you select Submit. So I'll close this out, and you do the same thing for both. Um, one of the things I highly recommend is that you follow up Again, as I mentioned earlier, you follow up with the recommenders to assure that they don't sit on it because eventually after a couple of weeks, that link could expire. So you want to you wanna be weary of that. And for the last piece, the benchmark test, um, as mentioned before, this is something that you will get an invite for once you submit the application component up here. Once you get this, you'll get an email with, an, with a registration and you'll sign up for the free test and get it going. Once we get those scores back, you'll see this checked off. So if you don't see that as part of your initial application, no worries. It just means that um, this, this is going to keep track of, of the benchmark testing for you. And that's pretty much it. It is, it is that easy to apply to a better chance. It is very convenient and very quick. Um, this is actually one of the years where everything is 100% online and managed by you. These are, these are convenient. Uh, interfaces that are made to make your lives easier and our processing easier of all the files. If anything here, for whatever reason, doesn't make sense, remember the, the best plan of action, the best course of action is to view the FAQs or the application guidelines. This will answer most of your questions. If one of your questions is not in here, do not hesitate to reach out to a better chance. We are more than happy to address anything that you might need. 
So after I'm done, I'll go ahead and log out and just sit tight.